千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware. As we all ready ourselves for this sacred process of the Tao. So the name of the story is the lesson of a lifetime. And let me share that story with you. And again, it's a story from Zhuangzi, and it takes place once upon a time during the warring stage period of ancient China. There was a man by the name of Yang. Yang was a devoted student of the Tao. He revered Laozi as the greatest teacher of his time. The two of them lived far apart from one another, but they kept in touch through. Written correspondence. One day, Yang, the students, needed to travel toward the south, and at around the same time, Laozi also had travel plans. He needed to travel west. The two of them realized that their paths would intersect, one going south, the other one going west. So they arranged for a time to meet each other at a halfway point. So finally, after all that correspondence, they were gonna be able to meet in person. So Yang, the students, was really looking forward to this. For him, being able to learn from Laozi directly in person, why it was the chance of a lifetime. So they coordinated the travel schedule, and as planned. Found each other on the road at the time that they had agreed upon. They then walked together toward their next stop. They discussed the Tao as they walked. After a while, Laozi looked to the sky and sighed. He said to Yang, "He said, 'I initially thought you would be someone I could teach.'" But now I see that is not the case. This was a strong rejection. Yang was shocked by these words. He was being rejected just when he thought he would have the greatest opportunity to learn directly from the master. What was going on? He did not know what to say. Laozi kept going, and Yang followed. They continued walking together, but now in silence. Eventually, they reached the inn, a tavern which was their planned stop for the day. At the inn, Yang continued in the role of the student, in accordance with the custom of courtesy at the time. He served Laozi as his teacher in cleaning up, washing off the dust from their travels on the road. After they were both properly cleaned up, settled down, he approached Laozi. He said, "Master, I have a question that I did not dare to ask while you were busy walking. Now that we are resting here, may I ask?" What are my faults that would make me unfit to be taught? In response, Laozi said, "You show 
so much arrogance and prideful attitude that people will be afraid of you. Who would even want to be near you? Remember the Tao. Someone with the greatest integrity would always assume he is still tainted with flaws. Someone with the most abundant virtues will always feel like he does not have enough. Well, you do not seem to understand. And that is why I cannot teach you. This was another shock to Yang because he never thought of himself. He never thought of himself in those terms. His expression changed as he thought about it and realized Lao Tzu was absolutely right about him. Humbled, he said, Master, I hear your reprimand with respect and will take it to heart. Now, earlier that day, when they first arrived at the inn, Yang had the arrogant, aggressive demeanor that Lao Tzu observed and later pointed out. The people at the inn reacted to Yang accordingly. The owner of the inn felt nervous around him while serving him personally. The other guest hurried out of his way to let him sit what he wanted. The cook and the servants, they all avoided him. Like, you know, who is this guy? Better not get near. Now, because of the penetrating insights from Lao Tzu, Yang thought long and hard about himself while staying at the inn. After much contemplation, he reached a turning point in his mind. By the time he left the inn, it was as if he became a totally different person. The arrogance and attitude that he came with, while well, they were gone. So people warmed up to him. They talked freely with him. Everybody joked with one another. They even fought over seats, like where to sit. Yang was amazed by the difference. Before meeting Lao Tzu on the road, Yang initially thought he had the chance of a lifetime to learn from the master. When Lao Tzu rejected him, he thought his chance was gone. Now, as part of the group at the tavern, being among the people for the first time, Yang felt like he belonged, that he was one of them. Then he realized he was correct initially, that in meeting with Lao Tzu, he actually did learn the lesson of a lifetime, one that would benefit him for all of his days to come. The end. The image here that you see depicts a tavern or inn from ancient times. As you can see, there are tables where people can sit down, drink wine, converse, order and eat food. There is a service counter to the left. There is stairs leading, leading up to where the guest rooms are located. So that is the setting of the story. So let's talk about this for a moment. The lesson of a lifetime. So the Tao, you can see now the sages may be brilliant, but the light is not glaring. So Yang, his light was too strong. That's what Lao Tzu was pointing out that 
he was so powerfully aggressive and arrogant that it would turn people away. Now, his lesson to Yang was that you have to mix with the dust. You have to be among the people as a cultivator of the Tao. You're not apart from them. You're not above them. You're not superior to them. You are with them. The same lesson applies to all of us. Just because we are studying the Tao, it doesn't make us superior to anyone. It makes us different, maybe, but not intrinsically better. We got plenty of problems and flaws and faults ourselves. Then, this is all about being illuminated, not flashy. So you have to be careful that even though you can be spiritually illuminated, that it isn't such a powerful light that it becomes flashy, that you are showing off. You have to dim the glare. You have to make your light soft. And ultimately, that results in you being straightforward or down to earth in mixing with the people. And that's where mix with the dust comes in. So Yang took that listen to heart. It became for him the listen of a lifetime. We too can take the listen to heart. It too can become one of the listens of a lifetime for us. So how do we apply this? So think about the workplace. Seniority at the workplace is not an entitlement. What I mean by that is when you have more experience or expertise than your coworkers, that doesn't entitle you to privilege. Your experience, expertise, seniority, it's actually a responsibility. You have a responsibility to mentor, to coach, to guide other people who don't have as much experience or as much expertise. So that's how we can apply that to the workplace. How about to the Tao? Spiritually, knowing more about the Tao should not make us arrogant. That will be ironic. It should be humbling. We are fortunate to have access to authentic teachings. Therefore, the authentic teachings talk all about humility. So how are how ironic would it be if uh, we feel like we know more and become more arrogant as a result? Then let's talk about among friends, socially, or just the people that we interact with. Maybe even the people that belong to other groups that are less, that have less blessings than we do. So think about that. Many people out there are less fortunate than we are. You know, we, we're very fortunate to be able to gather together as we do, to be able to learn from the ancient wisdom and so on. You know, this requires technology, requires access, requires a certain amount of wealth that we possess in order to be able to do this. Many other people out there don't have the opportunity, don't have the means. So something to point out, in the Tao is that, well, none of us had a choice as to what kind of environments we're born into. We did not. So the person who is less fortunate, that could just as easily be you or me. So for us to have the blessings, it's a gift. It's something for which to feel gratitude rather than arrogance. So this all goes back to the last line from this chapter, illuminated without being flashy. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. 
Let us all travel safely so we can meet again. Until next time, may the Dell fill you with peace and happiness.